going to be securing your plastic sleeve to your packer. This protects your pl packer and also makes sure that your uh, patch is later easy to remove. Otherwise, your resin may stick to the rubber. So we provide a roll of tape. You're going to go ahead and neatly fold over your plastic onto the packer and wrap your tape around the very end. You don't have to go crazy with the tape. Just one way around is going to be fine. Come to the other end, fold over neatly. Take a spare piece of tape and secure in the middle. To keep the fold nice and neat. Come to your very end. And again, wrap your tape around tightly, making sure that the plastic is neatly folded. Once your packer looks like this, you're ready to move on. So all of our packers connect by simply screwing it together. You got your patch on, your packer in place, so go ahead and connect your air supply. And then you'll use your pressure regulator to bring it up to pressure. You're going for 30 to 35 PSI. Once it's inflated, keep an eye on your regulator. Balance it out at 30 PSI. provide two sets of gloves for two people, a total of eight gloves. We recommend that each person wear two sets. So put one set on, overlap. You'll see why momentarily. Secondly, before you start, make sure that you have your fiberglass laid out and draw a center line on the mat side of the glass. This is the mat, this is the lace. Once you have that center line drawn, your gloves are on, and the plastic that we did before is on your packer, you're ready to begin. Flip your mat over so where the lace is exposed first. Make sure that your ties are within reach, your trowel is within reach, and your resin. Once everything is in place, you can begin. Your resin is going to be a pull-apart clip. You're going to pull up and remove. The UV bag will slide back. The Desi pack and the UV bag can be discarded. Begin mixing. Grip firmly on either side and shake. There is no set amount of time in which it takes to mix resin. You are going for color and consistency, not for time. So the faster that you can do this, the more working time that you can have on your actual installation. Once your resin reaches a consistent caramel color, you are ready to begin your wet out process. On the corners, it tends to gum up. You want to make sure that you get that resin out of the corners and it thoroughly mixes. Once it's reached that nice caramel color, you're ready to proceed. Grab a knife and cut a small hole in the top. Do not cut the whole bag open as it will pour everywhere and you will lose your resin. You do not want to do that. Pour half of your resin on the lace side. Again, remember to start on the lace side. It is very important. Otherwise, you will needlessly flip the mat over more times than you need to. Pour about half your resin. Be conservative on the first half. You will always have more resin than you need. It may not look like enough, but it is always enough. Now, spread the resin from side to side. 
making sure that you eliminate all white spots. Fiberglass only absorbs a certain percentage of resin, so there will always be some excess that you can scrape off. That's not a problem. Make sure that the white is gone. Once the white has been completely saturated, you can scrape off any excess as you do not need it. It will only hinder you in trying to install inside the pipe having extra resin that you don't need. Now once you've saturated it, flip it over. Mat side up. Use the rest of your resin. You can pour liberally now. And repeat the process on the mat side. Working from center out to the edges as it is hard to get the resin back onto the fiberglass once it falls off. So work from center out. This is messy. We recommend that you lay down the plastic tarp provided. And if you have additional tarps or other measures to keep the resin off of customer property, we recommend that you do so. Acetone can be used to clean any resin off of tools, hands, or anything else. Once it is completely saturated, you'll take each ends of your fiberglass and fold to that center line that you drew at the very beginning. Overlap only slightly, even just an eighth of an inch, just to make sure that both edges are touching so that there are two layers of fiberglass before you, before you proceed. Once you've reached this stage, you're going to flip the fiberglass one more time so that the seam is on the bottom. This will ensure that the seam is on the outside of your installation. Now come to your packer. Covering plastic, your packer is now protected from the resin. You will roll your patch onto the packer. You want to get it as tight as you can. This will help prevent any slipping when you go to install. Once you have rolled it on, you will then turn to either your wire or your zip ties. Depending on the installation, you may have to use zip ties to provide a tighter hold onto your patch. We recommend wire in most instances, as it will hold your patch on better and has a more consistent release than zip ties do. We recommend a minimum of three wires or zip ties to secure your patch. One on the end, one in the center, and one on the other end. Wires are secured with a single half turn and the excess is folded down. Do not twist your wires any more than that or you may have trouble releasing the patch from the packer. Once your patch and packer look like this, you are ready to go ahead and remove one of your sets of gloves as they will be covered in resin and you will not be able to touch anything else without getting ad covered in resin. This is why we recommend that you put two on immediately. You will now install into your pipe. Once your patch has reached its destination, it will inflate. Once your patch is installed at your desired location, you're going to come over to your pressure regulator hooked up to an air compressor. We do provide an inflation reel for this specific purpose, but you can use an airline and do a full in-place system. It depends on your certain application. Uh, we're using a four to six packer, which takes about 35 PSI. So we're going to go ahead and start increasing our regulator pressure. It takes approximately a minute for the patch to fully inflate and expand. You're going to want to watch your regulator the entire time 
to ensure that it doesn't overpressurize. Once it's fully inflated, the pressure will even out and you'll be able to walk away from the install and continue on with other processes. As you can see, we've reached 30 pounds of pressure and it's holding. If you're using zip ties for your application, you will almost immediately hear a pop of those zip ties once your packer starts to inflate. It is important that you listen for that pop if you're using zip ties. If the zip ties do not release, that will cause a problem in the installation down the road. You can also have a camera position to see those pop, but the most effective way is to listen it has a distinct sound of the zip tie popping. Once you've reached your pressure, it takes approximately two hours for the patch to fully harden. In colder climates, you may have to continue on for two and a half hours. It really depends on how cold or how wet it is inside the pipe. You can use the remaining resin that you have uh, to gauge how quickly it is setting off. So whatever is left over in the bag and on your tarp, you can use that to show how quickly the resin is curing. It does begin gelling within 30 minutes, but full hard is approximately two hours. After about two hours, your patch is gonna be cured. First step is to go ahead and remove your air supply. Reduce your pressure down to zero. Um, depending on what system you're using to inflate and how big of an airline you're using, it may take a couple minutes for it to completely deflate. Um, in this instance, it's probably going to take about 20 seconds. Once your PSI drops to zero, you'll be ready to pull. Uh, the packer will be uh, slightly stuck to the patch, um, either on the top, the bottom, or the sides. One side will always be a little stuck. All you have to do is just jostle just a little bit, and it'll come right out. Got a little bit more to go. You can still hear the hissing of the air. Once it stopped hissing, you know that all the air has come out of it and you're ready to pull. In some instances, you may want to twist to release the plastic from the actual patch. <clears throat> it's all right if the plastic tears, that's the point, is to damage the plastic, not your packer. As you can see, your patch is installed nice and clean.